the one that I think most illustrates the subtle ways in which the media infects the way we think is this one. Because so many people who would ordinarily know much better and have quite a clear line on things are absolutely persuaded that, that Harry and Meghan are the wrong ones and that the, the royal family as it is, or, or, or Kate and William, or um, even Andrew Windsor, that they're, that they're the good guys. It's extraordinary, and it hasn't happened by accident. It is the best example, with the possible exception of Brexit, it is the best example of media gaslighting that I have witnessed in my life. And speaking of Brexit, find me someone that hates Harry and Meghan, but can't really tell you why, except something, something, loyalty, something, and I'll find you someone that voted for Brexit. Almost, or in almost every case, but, but perhaps not every. 20 to 12 is the time. So you explain to me how the man mired in really lurid, mired for years now in lurid sex abuse allegations, vehemently denied, but whenever you are reminded of the vehement denial, you must also be reminded of the millions of pounds paid to one of his accusers in order to make one case, one legal case, go away, gets an absolute... Uh, well, gets a, gets a comparatively easy ride from the UK media, even in the last year, even post-disgrace, even post-payment, when he's sort of slowly crept back into the royal entourage at Sandringham on Christmas Day, or he's slowly crept back into, into the sort of public space. Was he allowed to wear a uniform? And Harry wasn't at one event. I could have misremembered that, or maybe they changed their mind at the last minute. But the idea that he gets an easier ride than his nephew, who has done nothing wrong, is extraordinary. And I'd like you to explain it to uh, a mythical um, listener who's been asleep for 10 years. Angela is in Bracknell. Angela, what made you pick up the phone? Um, because I've always liked Prince Harry yes. and I do feel that he has been totally wronged by the British media. Um, when he met Meghan, they made an extraordinary modern royal couple. Um, she was portrayed as the golden girl at many events. And then, bizarrely, she was thrown to the walls. Um, and the public are force-fed on a daily basis nasty stories about mainly her. And, unfortunately, they make the same opinion. Um, and, and then, and then got... you end up thinking that the egg is the chicken, don't you? You end up thinking that the negativity and the vitriol is justified by their behaviour. Exactly. Mm. I mean, for example, she chose to have her royal children in a different hospital and she was absolutely crucified by that. It's, it's her entitlement to choose where she wants to have her children. Um, another thing that really outraged me is the constant Piers Morgan criticism of her and the Jeremy Clarkson, how his career survived after that article he wrote about her. Mm. That was nothing short of an absolute disgrace. Um, it, it was pretty grim, Carly actually. I, 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 I mean, I, you know, I wrote about it that. Was absolutely disgusting. I wrote about that in my book, and I did that thing. It happened a few times writing the book, and and uh, where where I just had to double check I remembered it correctly because it was so mm -hmm. gross what he wrote. I mean, it was absolutely breathtakingly disgusting. But of course, I, the, the, if you're on the right side, both both the people you mentioned very much. Rupert Murdoch creations, and and therefore um, held to very very different standards from from the rest of the media firmament i think so so the, the the bit that possibly needs a little bit more exploration is 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 the bit where 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 the bond broke where where the media sort of changed direction or changed forces and you you think that's because they they wanted to do things their own way it was it would be that simple well, it, it it was really bizarre because one minute she was signing bananas at a chair, as she wrote a little message, I remember, on a banana. At, um, mm. it, I think it may have been a, woman, a woman's aid. Um, she wrote little words of encouragement on bananas and she was so praised at something so simple. But then all of a sudden it turned around and anything and everything that poor woman did, she was annihilated. Yes. Um, and it's almost like public figure number one hated public figure number one and they can't do anything. And yet you've got Andrew, who quite frankly should hang his head in shame and be sent to the tower. Mm. Um, These are I figures of speech, understand. of course. No, well, I mean, you do understand, but you don't understand. You're the same as me. I think we can probably assemble the jigsaw, but when we've assembled the jigsaw, we can't quite believe what we're looking at. We sort of go, well, how can that be? Well, just to make one example, BuzzFeed put together a wonderful selection of comparisons that I think if anybody honest were to read it properly, 
they'd have to abandon any opinion, even close to the one that Jason uh, w- w- was sharing earlier. Here's the same newspaper, right? They're, they're, both of these stories come from the Mail. And they're about... One is about um, Kate Middleton and one is about Meghan Markle, to use their maiden names. Not long to go, pregnant Kate tenderly cradles her baby bump while wrapping up her royal duties ahead of maternity leave. And William confirms she's due any minute now. So that's the male talking about Kate Middleton's baby bump during her pregnancy. Why can't Meghan Markle keep her hands off her bump? Experts tackle the question that has got the nation talking. Is it pride, vanity, acting or a new age bonding technique? So there are two women doing exactly the same thing. They are cradling their baby bump. Okay, two women doing exact two pregnant women in the royal family doing exact two pregnant women both married to princes doing exactly the same thing in exactly the same newspaper. One of them is tenderly cradling her baby bump and one of them is posing the question that has got the nation talking. Is it pride, vanity, acting, or a new age bonding technique? And that's why the the, the arguments, well, they shouldn't give so many interviews, or we shouldn't write books, or they shouldn't sign deals with Netflix, is so, uh, forgive me, pathetic. They were doing that in 2019, in Meghan's case, and, and, and nine months previously in Kate's. The same story, two women from the same family doing the same thing, being reported in the same newspaper. And I, listen, I, I wish I had some sort of uh, ask the audience type device sometimes, like they have on um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Because, you know, you can't hear me say that and cling to the view that you had before. If, if, if you were thinking, oh, no, she's a wrong and no, oh, it's rubbish, it's not media manipulation, it's all their own fault. I'm, no one's gaslit me. I arrive at my own conclusions. Thank you very much. You can't do, you can't do that. You can't hear me. And that's only one example. I've got five more, 10 more, 20 more. But that is so direct, that comparison, that it beggars belief. Two women, both married to princes, in the same family, doing the same thing, reported in the same newspaper. One of them, pregnant Kate tenderly cradles her baby bump while wrapping up her royal duties ahead of maternity leave. The other one, why can't Meghan Markle keep her hands off her bump? Experts tackle the question that has got the nation talking. Is it pride, vanity, acting, or a new age bonding technique? Love to the family. Here's another one, you ready? Kate's morning sickness cure. This is nice. Two women, same family, both married to princes, both got morning sickness. Um, well, no, I beg your pardon. Both, both. well, I'll, I'll read you the story. Both in the Express, this one, which I think technically still qualifies as a newspaper. Kate's morning sickness cure, question mark. Prince William gifted with an avocado for pregnant duchess. Isn't that lovely? So the story had, had, had been reported that Kate was suffering from uh, morning sickness. And therefore, a, a friendly member of the public who believed, I think it's an old wives' tale, that an avocado, well, I am probably the only person in England who still calls an avocado pear, an avocado would be a good cure for morning. Isn't that sweet? Uh, Meghan Mark, another headline, same newspaper. Meghan Markle's beloved avocado linked to human rights abuse and drought. Millennial shame. That's a story about avocados. One avocado has been linked to Kate Middleton. Kate's morning sickness cure. Prince William gifted with an avocado for pregnant duchess. Another avocado is linked to Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle's beloved avocado linked to human rights abuse and drought millennial shame. And now tell me that they brought it on themselves by doing all those interviews. Uh, Imis Yalua is in Fulham. Hello. Hi, James. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Good. Good to speak to you. Likewise. What's going on? Um, oh, actually, just before I start, I yes. wanted to say your tribute to Kate Garraway's husband was very lovely. You did well, I wish it very wasn't right. necessary, but it's very kind of you to say so. Thank you. I know. You did very right by your friend, and I know it's a really tough time to have to do stuff like this um, in this time. So, uh, well done to you. Thank you. That was my first thing. Um, my second thing is, and you and I have had plenty of conversations on this topic, mm. um, but... I mean, the most obvious one is a nice little bit of racism and sexism. It's always nice to be reminded of the society in which we live. And I think if there's one thing that you can if you, that you can say that really kind of highlights that is the way that Andrew Windsor... I also love that he's no longer Prince Andrew on this show. I think Not great. on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Although um, I'll Andrew... forget. You know how it works. I come up with these wizard wheezes. I've usually forgotten <laughs> about them by half past 12. But I'll try. I'll say it. So it's disgraced former Prime Minister Boris Johnson and 
Andrew Windsor. So there we go. <laughs> 2024 has started well. Carry on. Um, how Andrew Windsor is portrayed and how, um, yeah, Harry and Meghan have portrayed. And, you know, I'm... I'm I'm not always the biggest Harry and Meghan fan. Sure. I do think sometimes they've gone so too far. But I do think that in this case, he this man used twelve million pounds of his mother's money. Let's also get that straight. He didn't have any. Mm. He had to go and ask his mother for it to pay a woman who said that he raped her. And I think that what what it shows us is that what we're willing to allow people to let us forget. Because I was saying to our re- to your researcher, the reason that we remember Harry so much is because he's kind of pushed in our face. Yes. It's constant. It's like, they did this, and they did this, and they did this, and the nation's talking about it. People are like, oh, okay, well, the nation's talking about it, therefore it must be happening. But what you do forget is that somebody has actually written that headline. Yes. It doesn't necessarily mean that the nation was talking about it before, but they're talking about it now. And, 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 the, think, and the other point, of course, which I've forgotten to mention, is I, I I've got a couple more of these examples that are truly breathtaking, the the baby bump and the avocado so far. But the tradition would be for a quid pro quo. So I think Harry's big grievance, um, and he talks about this in the book, in Spare, his big grievance is that they felt that they were just being hung out to dry and that, that these stories were not being pushed back against. There was nothing in the palace machinery that was protecting them in the way that it would have protected his brother and his wife. No, I definitely agree. Like, there was no protection for them. But I also think, like, you have to you have to remember what Meghan represents. Like, she's a mixed-race woman, and the the reality is that the British media doesn't see her as that. They just, they, they kind of follow the one-drop rule, like, she's black, like, she's... It, and it's so alien to what they think royalty should be. It doesn't make sense. You can't look at that and think, oh... Following the tradition of hundreds and hundreds of years, this is what a royal should be. No, she's bucked the trend. She's different. So it was always doomed then, in a way. It was always doomed. It was always doomed. It was always doomed. Like, I I remember when I heard it happened, I thought, why would you marry into this family? Mm. Why? Like, there's nothing about this family that makes you think that you, as the kind of woman you are, will be safe. They won't, no, (laughs) they won't keep you safe. It's just not going to happen. And it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. And we're seeing it now that the rehabilitation of a a potentially a sexual predator, it's... He was, at, he was at Sandrine walking up and down like nothing happened. Yes, that, well, that's just true. Uh, and, and, you know, as you say, potentially or, or, or accusations and allegations with that constant side order of, of millions of pounds being paid out to one of his accusers. He, he was clearly embarked upon a sort of slow creep back into the into the setup, wasn't he? And, and these latest revelations and the response from the palace... Um, who will not have been taken by surprise by the front pages today, that, that this is a sort of a parting of the ways, time to give Andrew the chop, um, uh, uh, no way back. That's the Sun and the Mail, the two sort of biggest players in this market, clearly um, singing from the same hymn sheet, and, 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 and it's over for him. But the planet on which Andrew's plight situation is in any way comparable to Harry's doesn't exist except on Fleet Street. You know, the the idea that Harry will have garnered more negative headlines over the last five years than his uncle Andrew. It's, it's, it's breathtaking. And I'm sure you're right, Miss Yulua, the, the notion of her being such a such a violent rejection of royal history. You know, you cannot rise to the top of our society in this country if you are like her. You just can't. And whether that is racism or not is very much up to you. For me, it is, you know, it's because you justify the existence of the royal family by buying into some sort of notion of human hierarchy. And one of the most insidious examples of any notion of human hierarchy is is race based. So if you're buying into the notion of human hierarchy and then someone comes along who, according to your other human hierarchy, should be inferior to you, how can she end up being a princess? There it is. And, and unfortunately, having worked with and on some of these newspapers, with some of the people who've risen subsequently to positions of power, um, they, they, they do think like that. They, they would, whether consciously or not, they would have a huge problem with the idea of a, wom- a woman of colour being above them in the food chain. I will bend the knee to Charles and Camilla. I will bend the knee to William and, 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 and Kate. I'm not bending any knee, metaphorical or otherwise to some mixed-race woman from America. God forbid. Snobbery and race. Class and race. Absolutely inextricable in a lot of cases. And uh, rarely more so than in this one.